others were calling me stupid, an idiot. Um, it was bad stuff. It was really bad. So it got to a point where I started feeling useless. And um, life to me didn't mean anything anymore. I didn't want to eat. I didn't want to breathe. I didn't want to see. I didn't want to be around anyone. I believed I was much better off dead. It was the time I found out that my grave had been dug. And uh, this was by like the most unexpected people, like the people who are around that specific rumor, should I say. It was unexpected. And that's when I said, uh, you know what? Anything is going to happen because I've tried to take my life before. I've, I've tried to reason with God, but I'm not entering that hole that you dug before you do. That's, so, that's the time I said, no, no. So like a real grave, six yes. feet under? Six feet under, the space was, was, was cleared and I found out. Welcome to Two Covers. My name is Lynn Gogi. Now, my guest today is someone you all remember from the all girls group Blue Three in Uganda. But when she thought her star had begun to shine, everything went south. She gave up on herself. People dug her grave, and we all woke up to reports that Jackie Chandiru is dead. So, today, guys, I have her on set. But before we even dwell on this topic, please allow me to let her introduce herself. Mami, how are you? I'm very fine, thank Please you. Please introduce yourself. <laughs> My name is Jackie Chandiru, the only queen of the Nile, all the way from Uganda in 254. Yes, in 254. Yes. You call yourself the queen of the Nile. Queen of the Nile. Where, where did the name come from? I'm one because I'm from West Nile. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in Uganda and around the world, nobody knows the northern region from Uganda for anything good because they just know about like Joseph Kony, the, the rebel leader, death, basically bad things. Mm -hmm. So I happen <clears throat> to feel and think that I am um, I'm something different yeah. from all the sad news, all the negative news that comes from Northern Uganda. Mm -hmm. So I'm proud to be from around the Nile, it's yes. West Nile. Yeah. And on top of that, I'm beautiful. You are beautiful <laughs> and the crown fits you. Exactly. And the crown fits you. Yeah. But as you said, Queen of the Nile, yeah. every crown comes with its own challenges. Yes. Sometimes we win, sometimes, sometimes we, we, lose. we lose. And we all knew back in the days when Jackie was shaking it, mm -hmm. like you are such an amazing performer. I, I told you earlier how we would go home to our uh, black and white television <laughs> and watch you. And some of my sisters would pretend to be Lillian. The other one mm -hmm. would pretend to be Cindy mm -hmm. and we were all there watching you guys perform you are winning in life yes I we, we, we were winning we were uh, we were living our dream mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. because uh, you know we was young and we, we it was, at that point we didn't even think about um, like stardom we were just thinking about singing and showing people the potential that we have mm. as singers yes. and performers yeah <laughs> I was going through some of the comments on your song, Taji, and some people were saying you are so ahead of your time. Yeah. Do you think that? Yes, I totally think so. And um, even the, the management and the producer we had was way ahead of time. Like mm -hmm. whatever work we did with Steve Jean, I personally believe we were ahead of time. But um, it was for the better because at that, at that point, um, the business was, was stagnant. People were like, um, were just coiled around a specific area. Mm. So Steve Jean just, he pushed us yeah. to do, we were not doing anything just for Uganda, not for, for, for Africa, we were doing something for beyond mm. the, the, the waters. You were going international. Yes. And then when the group launched, you were the least likable member yes, in the team. I was. Yeah, when did things turn around and everyone now started saying, Jackie, Jackie? <laughs> I think.
think that's after we, we went solo. Although before, mm. um, for example, my scenes and videos, a few people would comment and say, hey, this girl, Ati, I think, uh, you know, she has something in her. But, yes. um, you know, I, I, my, I myself didn't believe that much in myself. And uh, because Lillian has got an amazing voice, mm -hmm. Cindy has got a strong voice. And for me, I, I just believed I was more of a performer. Mm -hmm. Although when it came to music, I thought I could uh, maintain a note or a key. Yeah. So I just kept it that way. I also didn't believe that much in myself because I grew up with um, low self-esteem. So I didn't, even when I won the competition, I wasn't too sure about, you know, I was like, are you guys sure about this? Yeah. Or you're just playing with me? But um, I guess somehow, somewhere they saw mm -hmm. something. The potential. Yes. You're in a girl's group and everyone is commenting about the other members of the group. Yes. Huh? But then you go, your name is nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. How did you deal with that? I was very fine with that. You see, the, I'm the kind of person who, if um, I'm in a situation, for example, mm -hmm. but um, everybody else is, if I try to do something, though the people outside are looking at everyone else in the same situation and uploading them, I have no problem. I believe in groups, yeah? I don't believe in single-handed um, conquers. You're a wins. team player. Yes, I'm a team player. Mm -hmm. So if everybody was talking about Cindy, Lillian, I was fine because I'm part of Blue 3. Mm -hmm. So if they don't talk about me, it's fine. Yeah. It was even better that way because if they were speaking about me, I would be more afraid, like they would notice all the small flaws yes. that I had. But if they're concentrating on Lillian and Cindy, mm. well and good. Yeah. And then we woke up, the group yeah. was normal. Yeah. What happened? Um, well, somebody convinced Cindy that uh, she could become a big shot in Spain. And um, she believed it. She went there, things, um, she let us go, things didn't work out. Then she called us back, she said, no, you know, it was a mistake. Um, so we said, okay, fine, just come back. Because at that time, whatever contracts we had, we were marketed as three people. So there was no way we were going to do any of these interviews or shows as two people. Yeah. So we were very okay with doing anything possible for her to come back. Mm -hmm. So we organized for her. She's supposed to get uh, come back to Uganda. She was in Spain. We had mm -hmm. taken holiday, mm -hmm. and she just she just wasn't on the flight, mm -hmm. and she just went mute for some time. And then the next time she she reappeared, mm -hmm. she was saying a totally different story. Mm -hmm. Do so, you think she was dealing with her own stuff, maybe? No, I like just she had her own issues. No, I just think she was young at that time, and. Uh, Sometimes you weigh certain things. Um, even depending on age, there's no way you're going to come to me and convince me that I can be the biggest artist in the United States of America and move past uh, Megan Thee, The Stallion, yes. Beyonce, and what. Yeah. And I believe it because I use my head. And I'm like, um, that would take a long time. But this person is trying, the person is trying to tell me that it's instant. It's already done. You it's just come, just be there. Yes. Yeah. So there's no microwave success. Mm. If you want to get success, if you want to get a name, it will never come easy. And mm. if it comes easy, it will be so difficult to, to, to maintain or to, to keep it at that level that it will just slip away Ab after a short time. Absolutely. So she, I believe she should have used her head. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and you all went your separate ways. You came out with your new release and everyone was happy. You went straight to number one with your song. Is that correct? Yes. How was that like for you? Um, it, it, it was a shock because I didn't believe that much in myself. Vocally, I, was, uh, I adored Lillian and Cindy. So I didn't think I was able to match up um, properly to everything. But you know, God has a way in which he does his own thing. So somehow I, I, I did my work, although it took, um, I went uh, straight to number one, for example, my first single as a solo artist mm. was um, in my, my home, my mother tongue. Yeah. And it hit so big in Northern Uganda that I literally fed on one song for like a year and a half. Every weekend I was literally in Northern Uganda and I was, you know, I was being paid highly for it. But in, in Kampala, when I released it in the capital city, mm -hmm. I was shunned off. I was told, yo, now you're singing your mother tongue. 
you've left the, the group, you can no longer handle, and you're deciding to abuse us, insult us in a language we don't understand. So that they just refused to play my music. And I, at that point, I just left everything to God. Yeah. And you are also young. You are still young. I mean, you are not at the old. You are, you are also young. I mean, you know, you've lost uh, some of the members of your group. Now you are going solo. You are hitting, and then the DJs are not playing your yeah. song. How did you cope with that? It it was hard. It was it was really hard because I put my time and effort into studio, mm -hmm. into like creative thinking, the video, the script writing. So. When people were not appreciating it, I was broken. Did you have a strong support system? Um, I can't say I had a strong support system because the few times I, I kept people around me and I tried to confide in them about what I was going through, if I speak to them at 2 p.m. by 4 p.m., it's in the media. Yeah. So at that point, I had decided to basically cut people off. Mm -hmm. It was just me, myself, and I. Mm -hmm. Wow, amazing. And then Jackie, we woke up. You said you confined to someone and then 4 p.m. the news are in the media. But this time we woke up to some images of you yes. and people are like, ah, ah, this is not Jackie. Yeah. This is not Jackie. What happened? It was addiction. Plain and simple. I, I I got a health problem and um, I got addicted to a painkiller that was supposed to help me with a health problem. Despite um, the rumors that were going around, I was doing cocaine or, or heroin or God knows what. It was a painkiller and it's called pethidine. Very highly addictive, by the way. And and that was it. I by the time those pictures came out, they were actually leaked by the police. Uh, uh, tabloid paid the police to leak them. By the time those pictures came out, I was, I was beyond. Uh -huh. um, for someone to self-medicate and to feel like, no, I need more and more and more of this, sometimes maybe things are going on in their lives. What was going on in your life that led you to self-medicate and feel like I have to be dependent on this apart from your back pain? It was mainly the back pain, but uh, one of the, the, the side effects from the drug is uh, sleep. So I suffer, I, have, um, I had a disorder, at that time it was really bad, insomnia, I don't sleep. Like in, in a week and a half, I can sleep for two hours maximum, or maybe two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. So one of the side effects of the drug, apart from the pain, it made me sleep. So you know with, with 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 everything that was going around the rumors the depression i had and the issues to lock certain things out you sleep because when you sleep your mind shuts down you don't think you don't um, go so deep into stuff that bothers you so that was like another side effect mm -hmm. it was a side effect from the drug which worked for me but above all it was the pain because i was doing between four to six or seven shows in a night and you know, well, personally, I don't just stand and waste time on stage. Mm. I use energy, I, I, I move. So if that was gonna help me, if I did like two shows, for example, I would have so much pain and to reduce the pain, I would have to take the drug. So if I'm doing that and I'm working six days a week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did your family members, like, did they know that's what you were going through? Did they know you were self-medicating? They found out later that I was self-medicating when it had gone past, beyond actual self-medicating, mm -hmm. when it was now an addiction. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm genuinely happy that you are so open to this conversation because I do, addiction is not an easy topic. It's, it's not it's, an easy it's topic not to at have. All. Uh -huh. It's not even an easy uh, disorder to, to, to cope with. I, I got up, I fell down, I got up, I fell down like so many times and the only reason as to why I'm open about it is because I know there's people who are going mm. through this and even aside from them going through what I went through, the people around them have got to adjust to what these people think because the way an addict thinks, 
is not the way a normal a sane person thinks. Mm -hmm. A sane person will ask you, what are you thinking? Can't you see you're dying? But for you, you will stand by yourself and say, no, I have this problem or maybe I can't sleep or I can't do this, I can't do that. So it's it's a lot and depression as well, because for me, that's, that was like the, 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 the umbrella for everything. It's real. Africans don't take it as something that is serious, mm. but you can die from depression. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can die. Uh, at what point, um, what led to your promoter telling you, Jackie, sit here, I sit here, we have to openly tell people what you're going through and they have to come and assist you? At, it was at the point when the pictures had leaked. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, people were asking questions. The fans, we've not had anything. What is this? What is that? So. That was the time when, when, you know, I'd gone to rehab for some time, then there was rumors. And then when I came out, she, my, my management was like, you need to explain where you've been and what happened. Let's fundraise and give back to Jackie. She's such a darling. Uh, she's in great pain, but God is healing her. And the doctors are doing a great job to heal her. It must not, it was not easy for you to sit it down. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't because um, people are used to seeing you as, you know, wearing high heels, nice makeup, uh, nice beautiful hair, hair, yeah, beautiful. And then those pictures come out and it was hard because when it comes to, to entertainment, image is everything. Did you feel burdened by this whole artist thing? Like, yes. oh, I have to look a certain way, yes. uh, be a certain way, talk a certain way? Yeah, I, I, I couldn't heal in private. I couldn't heal in private. I couldn't even manage my own disorder in private. Everyone wanted to know. And even when they got to know it was addiction, they just built, you know, people look for likes. Bloggers want likes. People want audience. They would look for anything else to just say about it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that bothered me because I'm the kind of person, if I did something, I have um, 501 comments, but 500 comments are perfect, amazing then one comment is negative. It's going to bother you. Yeah. Then we all woke up and we all, you know, reports were going round. Chandiru is dead. Jack is dead. And people are reporting of your death. Where did the news find you? And what was, was your reaction towards that? I was in rehab um, for part of the time. And when I found out these stories were going round, I was shocked. That's when, you know, at that point I was like, okay, is it that bad? Because when you're an addict, you never realize the extent to which you're doing something wrong. So I was in shock. And I'm thinking, okay, so people actually now want to kill me even before I actually die. But you know, somehow with, with that one, I, I kind of got over it like for a while. When it happened the first time, I was shocked. Second time, I was fairly shocked. Third time, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm dead. I'm like, it's cool. If that's what you think. It's fine. The next time you ever see me, actually, I was more comfortable with it going around that I was dead because I was like, now I can come out and be like nobody. Nobody will know or, or, or think it's me or even suspect. You are comfortable with people saying by the you third are time, dead? By the third time, I was fine. It didn't get to you. Like, talk to me about the first time. The, like, the first, were you the, not the first like... time I was devastated. Yeah. I, I did eat for like uh, three days. I wasn't eating, I wasn't, I was taking a bit of water. I was devastated. The second time I was like, seriously, the first time I, I didn't, you know, you said I was dead, I, I didn't die. Second time you're still saying that. By the third time I was like, hey, let me take advantage of this. Cause that's one thing I had in, we had in training with um, when we're training for the pop stars, the mm. group. You take something negative and make it positive. So at that point, I. I just made myself comfortable with the fact that if that's what they think, then when I actually come out, I won't have to explain to anyone. I can just be a nobody mm -hmm. and I can like mix and camouflage. Mm -hmm. Nobody will even know it's me. Mm -hmm. So you turned the lemons into yes. lemonade. Yes. God, t talk to me about this particular period where you attempted to take away your life mm -hmm. and then your mother reported you to the police. Um, actually, my mother reported me first. Uh, before that time mm. and um, they had done everything possible to try and tell me that what I was doing was wrong but you know when you're doing something wrong you can never accept it 
So I went to rehab once, uh, twice. It was just that, you know, you come out, like I told, like I said, mm -hmm. the, when you go to rehab, they just show you that you can live without that drug or whatever you're addicted to for a specific period of time. But the actual test comes outside because there's something that makes us do what we do. It's called a trigger. There's something that triggers us to go and look for, for weed, um, to go and look for, for example, pornography, to look for alcohol. So the triggers come when you get out into the world. And, and, and that was it. So when this happened once, twice, and I kept slipping back into um, addiction, I just got tired. The, the things I would read, like I told you, I read literally everything. The things I would read, the comments, some people were insulting me, you know, and... What, what were they saying? It was not nice. Others were calling me stupid, an idiot. Um, it was bad stuff. It was really bad. So it got to a point where I started feeling useless. And um, life to me didn't mean anything anymore. I didn't want to eat. I didn't want to breathe. I didn't want to see. I didn't want to be around anyone. I believed I was much better off dead. Because I know when you're dead, whatever it is that happens to your soul, I, I know maybe it's in purgatory, maybe hell or heaven, or wherever it goes. But here, people will forget about you, and that is it. And I just wanted people to forget about Jackie Chandiro. And that was the time I actually regretted ever having opened my mouth to sing and become Jackie Chandiro. Cool. And singing is the only thing you know how it's the to do only best. Thing. It's the only thing I knew, but um, I almost blamed God for the gift He gave me. Actually, I did. Oh, I blamed Him. Hmm. It must have been hard for you. It was bad. Much as I was doing uh, something wrong. It was hard and people didn't give me chance to heal just by myself. You felt like you were on your own? I was on my own. At what point did you look yourself in the mirror and you were like, I have to come out of this, I have to fight. With every breath I have left, I have to fight. It was the time I found out that my grave had been dug. And uh, this was by like the most unexpected people, like the people who are around that specific rumor, should I say. It was unexpected. And that's when I said, uh, you know what? anything is going to happen because I've tried to take my life before I've mm -hmm. I've tried to reason with God but I'm not entering that hole that you dug before you do that's so, that's the time I said no no so like a real grave six yes. feet under six feet under the space was 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 cleared and I found out You, 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 you know, you spoke about wanting, telling God to take away your gift. At this point when you found out someone had dug a grave for you, and I'm assuming these are people you knew, yeah. people who had dug the grave for you, are people you very well know. Um, what did you tell God? I told him thank you. For what? If he didn't reveal that to me, I would not be the woman I am today. That's the time I said thank you. Thank you. And it's so significant because I think someone digging a grave for you means they have totally given up given on it. Yeah. And they're just waiting for you to fall down. Yeah. And they don't have to hustle making all the preparations. Yes. They've even you made be them. ready, yeah. You look back at that moment and you think you would be sitting here right now? I don't think so, because I would actually be six feet under if it wasn't for that. 
Because mm -hmm. that made me make uh, my decision. That made me take the stand. Because I was like, I will die of anything else, not this. God, um, what did you start doing differently? I just woke up. The same way you go to bed and you're so stressed, something is bothering you, you're thinking so much. But when you wake up in the morning and you just feel, wow, this is a, it's a new day. I just woke up. And from that time on, I've never looked back. You've not touched a drug since then? I was in hospital at one point and um, I was in so much pain and the doctor prescribed that drug. I told him, no, it's not happening. Find something else. He's like, no, you see, this is a very good, he did know, this is a, a very good painkiller and blah, 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 blah. I said, no, find something else to give me. If not give me a very nice Panadol, maybe extra or advanced or something, but not Pethadine. Mm. And of course, there was the story of you and your ex-husband now. Uh, you guys, you still talk? Of course. How, how is he? He's fine. He's, 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 he's very fine. He, he checks on me literally every day, should I say. Mm -hmm. So we talk. Mm -hmm. Because it wasn't that uh, we had a fight or we infidelity. There was nothing like that. It was just my issue, my, 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 my addiction. Mm -hmm. You feel like you're the reason it did not work out? I am the reason. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like, but I am mm -hmm. the reason. That I accepted. Yeah. And that's why even when the divorce came in, I, I totally understood where he came from because mm -hmm. he explained it to me. And yeah, but it's also the fact that he was there for you. Yeah, he was there for me throughout. He did not even turn his back once. You know, he said, you're my wife, you're my love, and I will be there for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's nice to know you guys are in good terms. Oh, yeah? yeah, we are. How is the relationship like right now between you and your family? We talk. Mm -hmm. we, we, we talk. I disappointed them so much. So I'm also trying to find my way to, to, to come back like well in a good light to them because they did everything insanely possible then they gave up on me but I couldn't blame them not everyone has that much patience mm -hmm. and the relationship between Cindy you Cindy and Lillian I speak to Lillian I was actually speaking to just yesterday uh, Lillian uh, Cindy I don't speak to her directly but a work in progress. Yeah. Okay. And so now let's talk about your music because I know your song with Arrow Boy is what everyone is talking about <laughs> at the moment. How, how did the collaboration come about? <laughs> We like Arrow Boy. Yeah. Yes. You, know, you have no option, but I like <laughs> Arrow Boy. <laughs> you like Arrow Boy? Yes. Just like, 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 or? Leave me alone. We shall, we shall not discuss that part. Like, like, like. Okay. You like Arrow Boy? Yes. And, yeah. and, and that was his fan, like, from way before. So I kept listening, you know, I would listen to his song. Some I didn't even know it was him. Then when I finally got to, um, like, to watch the videos, you know, to check on his channel, I was like, wow. This is him. And um, I hunted him down. You hunted him down yes. for the collab? Yes. Okay. And it's, it, I was telling you earlier, the song is amazing. Thank Enos you. did such an amazing job with the visual mm -hmm. and the dancing. Of course, you are melanin popping and Arrow Boy is, is Arrow Boy. He's Arrow Boy. <laughs> <laughs> How was it like shooting that video? No, it was, it was amazing because mm -hmm. even before you shoot a video, there's a script. Yes. So even when writing the script, you know, I like I had this picture in my head. So Enos literally brought it to life. I told him, no, we would want this, this, this and this. And he's like, OK, what if we add this? What if we do that? And it was it was amazing. It was easy because it's easy to work with Arrow. He's, mm. he's, he's very talented. He knows what he wants. He also has a vision, even if he's working with somebody. He also shares a vision mm -hmm. in, in what he wants. So it was very easy for us. Yeah. And it was it was it was so much fun, you know. 
I got a bit jealous, that, you know, the scenes where he's with the girls. I was like, okay, and he looked so happy. I was like, okay. You are, you are, you are jealous? And now why were you jealous though? Okay, don't go to, you know these okay. things. <laughs> he seems too happy, so. Why were you jealous? No, he seems too happy, too comfortable. Yeah. And he kept saying, I'm in heaven, I'm in heaven. I was like, okay. So, my yeah. mind is that. Yeah. I was just happy that, you know, he was comfortable with everything. Mm -hmm. The shoot went the way it did. Yeah. And it was successful. Yo. I Baby girl, you're the one. One I know. From the start, I, I, with, with, with the way I was um, stalking Arab boy on, you know, musically. Oh, musically, I, yes. okay. Well, <laughs> the, the other stalking came later. Oh. But musically, I, I knew we were going to put out something good because I was more actually afraid of not doing anything that he would like. Yeah. I was more afraid of that. And for him on the other side, he's like, oh, I'm working with a legend, you know? But I was more like, I'm no. working with my... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm working with... I mean, this is Arab boy. Yes. So, will I sing well? Will I do this? Will I do that? So, by the time we got there and I was trying, you know, he was like, wow, this is nice. This is nice. So, I was like, okay, I can work with him. He's, yeah. he's, he's cool. Yeah. So, when by the time we, we, we did the... We did it in about four, three to four hours. The whole song was done. Yeah. Product, everything was done yeah and i was comfortable with it and I, you know i kept asking like every 30 minutes are you okay is it are you okay with it you know because i don't want to do something i like and you don't like yes so. god i know our audience they want to hear you drop something so can you sing for them a voice <laughs> uh, a verse from that song i want to be that one i want to be your lady I wanna be that girl I wanna be that girl <laughs> Can I sing Jackie? No, no. <laughs> Leave the singing to me. <laughs> I leave the singing to you. I wanna be that girl. And I know right now you, you are happy. Mm. Right now you are making moves. Right now people are starting to listen to you again. People are starting to pay attention to you again. But how are you really as an individual? How are you? I am fine. I, I have never been happier, I think, but I am happiest the most because the people that wrote me off are watching me right now. And they have no option because I know I'm everywhere. You are everywhere. You are everywhere. So they have no option. So it, it, it gives me that satisfaction that, you know, you wrote me off, but I'm here. Yeah. And unfortunately, or fortunately, I'm not going anywhere. What future collaborations are we looking at? Or are you giving us uh, any music as a single artist? Yes, I am, actually. Uh, I'm supposed to travel in yes. a few hours. I know. Yes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> For that. Yes. And uh, I don't want to talk. I just I just want to put it there. Out there. Yeah, because this, this, this time I'm not going to speak about something that people are expecting, no. I'm going to just drop it yes. and say, I've done this yeah. with so-and-so. But um, it's definitely some of the biggest names in Africa. Mm -hmm. Not just East Africa, but Africa. In Africa. Yes. And we wish you well. And you know, even if you release those songs, you can always come back and we sit down and we talk oh, about the Lynn, music. If you're <laughs> going to be shooting at 7 in the morning, I'll call you at 5.30 in the morning. I say, Lynn, so where are you now? I have this new release. Yeah. Come, I'm coming. We go shoot I now. Say, no, I have some. Went to interview. I say, no, Lynn, make no. it happen. And you'll find me here. If yeah. there's somebody in yeah. the chair, I'll say, get up. I'm yes. sitting. I want to hold your hands because I know these hands tell a story. Yes. When you look at these cars right now, what do they remind you of? What do you want these cars to mean in your life? These cars are the battle I fought. I hated these cars in the start, but they are a reminder of the mistakes that I made. There's one thing you need to know. Our bodies are a temple of God. When you throw a stone at God's temple, when you ruin God's temple, you have to pay the price for ruining it. This is my price. I was gonna actually go into surgery and you know, treatment for them. But I realized people need to know that I threw stones at God's temple. I destroyed his temple and this is my payment. So every time, even when I'm doing makeup or wherever, if it's a video, what, 
they say, oh, do you want us to work on your hands? I'm, I'm like, like, no. no. These mm. are my scars. This is my punishment, of which I accepted the mistake I made, and I accepted my punishment from God. So that's what these scars tell me. These scars remind me of the time I literally almost threw myself six feet. Under. Yes, and God, to have you look at them that way mm. as a constant reminder that I overcame, yes. Yes. I made mistakes, mm. but I'm here again. I think that's how we need to look at our lives, you know? Mm. Like, everyone passes through hard times, but it's not the end. Exactly. It's, it's, it's not the end. And, you know, I, I say it everywhere, and I will always say it. You will never go through anything. God will never make you go through anything that you're not supposed to overcome. Yes. He knows. He knows these things. Why do you think God allowed Satan to tempt Jesus? Jesus is his son, his own, you know, from him. So God allowed it because he knew yes. Jesus yeah. would overcome. Yeah. Because the devil promised Jesus everything, yeah. you know, that you just drop down from there, the angels will, will, you know, I'll give you riches, I'll do this and this and that. But God knew that Jesus would overcome. The way you just preached, are we getting any gospel music from <laughs> Yes, you are. Ah, hallelujah. Yes, you are. Yeah. Amen, you are. And um, this one is specifically taking like so much of my time. Mm. I don't usually take this long with songs, but it's taking so much of my time because I am gathering everything that I am musically and as a person. And, you know, with, with the gift God gave me, for example, I was able to live um, off say my, my voice for a long period of time without even like uh, going to an office or sitting in an office no so he gave me that gift and on top of that he saved me not once not twice not three not four times even when I quarreled with him I'm like listen just take me away I'm tired he still pulled me up so I have to pick I'm, I, I don't even know if I'm grateful enough you know to I I, I can I know I can say thank you and he'll say you're welcome but I need to pick the gift he gave me I need to pick everything I've gone through to give him a, 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 a gift a thank you that has weight yes. that is beyond precious yes so I am working on this one I think I've done about three different gospel songs and I just keep sitting listening I go back I listen to all of them like no this I need to do this 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 and I'm like no let me go back for and do something else because I don't know how I'm ever going to thank God. So I have to give him the best. Yes. If it is the best producers, even if I'm going to have to spend, I don't know how many, how much money to go to 10 different producers until I get the right sound for God. That's when I'll put it out. Yes. But I am working on it. God, we are, we are proud <laughs> that we have a father who loves us. I ha we have to thank him yeah. every single day, every, because he doesn't sleep. He's there for us. And he knows the plans he yes. has for us. Even before we were born, he exactly. knew the plans. He knew. he knew and he still knows, you know. Exactly. And, and oh God, now we are turning into uh, Kachacha. Which is <laughs> fine. <laughs> which is, which fine. is fine. Which is fine. Huh? Yeah. Your final words to our audience. I'm, I'm extremely grateful, you know. Even with the times that, that I believed I had stood up and I kept falling back down these things happen there's always challenges in life so i want to thank them so very much for giving me this chance and for giving me an ear again for the people i've worked with especially arrow he didn't even think twice i had people who kept me on waiting lists but because arrow, of your yeah, past because of what because of what happened but you see they didn't look past the fact that i can sing it was just about that. It's just about having belief. They also lost that belief in me. By the time I, I, I found Arrow, he didn't even think, actually, he did he want to ask, what time are we meeting? But we couldn't meet that day. So I'm, I'm grateful that, that, you know, people have embraced. And the one thing I would love to say is a big thank you to the Kenyans especially, you yes. know. You meet Ugandans, they'll say, oh, what were you thinking this time? What was this? What was wrong with you? But Kenyans don't even remind me of that. They don't. They, you know, they, they recognize it. The first thing they say is, oh my God, I love this song. When are you listening to something? When is this? They don't, they, they move on yes. from things that put you down. And I'm happy for that. I'm, I'm, I'm happy, Quincy, Lord Guiri. I'm just happy where I am. And above all, I'm happy that 
the man upstairs has said yes. That means nobody. Yes. Can say? Can say no. No. Yeah. And you are the true definition of from grace to grass to, gra to ah. grace again. Exactly. exactly. I mean, I've, I've, I've taken a flight once, private flight, to buy a pair of shoes in Dubai yeah. from an Aldo store. Yeah. And I've also been at a point where I've had nothing to eat. So there's nothing in this life that can move me anymore. Jackie, we've come to the end of this amazing show. Thank you so much for making time. I know we had to shoot this so early in the morning. Oh, so yeah, <laughs> because our schedules are crazy. Yeah. But I want to thank you and I want you to know that we are vouching for you. Thank the you. Tuko people are vouching for you. Kenyans are vouching for you. Africans are vouching for you. And the only place you can go from here is up. up right is right. up so keep uh, speaking good things unto your life keep affirming amazing words into your life wake up in the morning and say i am strong i am enough i got back because soon you will be speaking to millions of girls and i want them to know no matter where you've been no one can say where yeah. you are going only god can say where you will yes. you will end up thank you mommy You're yes welcome. tuko fans it's been real till next time my name is lynn Gogi. Number one, I'll never leave you alone.